Okay, we're going to be working on replacing the uh, CRT on this port color. It's got a weak green gun, and I have a replacement CRT right over there. So we're going to put that in this set here. I've got my instructions out right now that goes over the, dis the disassembly. These are usually in the first couple of pages of the SAMs. And they should always be consulted because, uh, oops, I got because it can be handy to actually read the instructions once in a while to figure out how to take things apart. There might be some little trick that you can pick up on. So, disconnect the screw, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to bore you all reading this, but we're going to take this apart and I'll do it step by step. So, I'm going to take a break and uh, come back to it once I got a little bit further apart. Try to put that new CRT and see if we can get better greens out of this. Like I said, the green gun's weak. It comes up eventually, but it takes several minutes for it really looks right, and even then it's not as good as I think it should be. And the CRT I got from the uh, forum user tests very really well, so that's what's going to go in this one. I really like this set. It's a very early port of color. I think it'll work really well with the CRT. I'll come back in a few minutes once I get it apart. Okay. The chassis can be removed from the front by removing three screws holding the print circuit board. One, two, and where is the third one? I don't see a third screw holding the print circuit board. I must be missing something in the back here in the back, maybe. Let's take a closer look. I don't see anything back in there. I only see two screws holding the print circuit board. I don't really want to proceed until I get that figured out. There's one here. There's two here. And look at me. Or tilt it up. Let's see here. Oh, there's. Looks like something right there. I think I see it. Must be behind this tube. Hmm. I need to bring a little more light into the situation. One. Two. Damn, I thought for sure I saw another one over there. Hmm. Let me tilt that up again and see what bubbles I was seeing. Maybe that's just a spacer. That's just a spacer, I guess. One here. That's screw. Oh, that's just a spacer. No, I only see two. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Ah, right here we go. Okay, I see him now. It's behind this, uh, this little pot convergence. There, you can kind of see it right there. It says one, two, three. So we're going to take those three out now. Got to make sure I remember this ground lead right here. I guess as long as I'm doing this, I'm going to get some other notes uh, let's see you can see the routing of the that yellow lead there is I guess that's the degaussing circuit I see some coils wrapped up there it's not real clear here but you can clearly see the yellow through there comes down this way so that's how that should look when it's all back. And the wire up here. These wires are just dressed out on the side like that. Nothing particular magical about that. Hmm. Proceed now that I get rid of that ground wire. Note to self. Those are pretty small screws. These three small screws were for the uh, PC board. 
these two brown or tan or gold color screws, I guess they are, copper cover, copper screws are for the back of the cabinet. They go in these brackets right here. This one here, it holds on the top, the back panel, it goes right in that plastic piece there. And these round headed screws with the front. Okay, after getting those three screws holding the printer circuit board, it says one screw from the high voltage cage and two from the secondary control. So my guess is this is the one screw from the high voltage. And furthermore, I'm guessing that, wow, that is going to be a real bear to get. I don't, I don't mean that. Well, there's, I think this is the secondary controller for in here. There's a screw here, and there's a screw in here, which is going to be a major pain in the rear to get at. I don't know how you're supposed to get that, except probably once you start to pull this back, you might have access to it. And then it says four from the tuner cluster. I can see one here. I can see one. Let's see if this will pick this up. Two. Oh my God. Holy smokes. I don't know. I see another one right up through. I don't know if it'll pick it up or not. There's one right there. Straight in there. Three. I don't know where the fourth one could be. Good God. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see about that as we get into it. The reason I'm taking this all apart, I, I, I expect I have to clear all this out to be able to get to that batch of screws that holds that CRT in, but I don't know. We'll see. about one and a quarter inches from this neck here to the base of the glass. That's where the plastic in the in the CRT joins. It's about one and a quarter inches to that. Um, let's see here. I'll put a yellow dot On the purity front. Hope that's coming out. It's got a little wet spot right there. And I think the rest of it's pretty self evident. This screw is from the tuner cluster. Those are your PC board screws. That's from the top screw, the tuner cluster, which is right here, which is retaining this terminal strip and I mean, not the tuner cluster, but the control cluster. It's kind of loose here, so I'm not sure where the other screw is. I'm going to pull all the knobs off and try to work this kind of slowly so I can figure out what's going on. Wow, this is a, this is a nightmare here. I don't know if I can get it or not. I'm trying to eliminate. There's a screw that's holding on that control cluster right there. Man, I don't know how I'm going to get at that thing, but this is the kind of work you don't want to do if you're what they call ham fist. You really just got to be mellow with it. I think I'm even getting the right one there. Let's see that again now. It's underneath that little area there. And God bless. It's not that one. It's down underneath there. It's underneath that like black spacer there. That little thing there. You can barely see it. Holy smokes, that's going to be tight. Well, that was fun. You see, I had to pull the kind of 
dislocate the high voltage chassis to get access to get that little mini nut runner in there. I had to remember, I had to disconnect this UHF lead here. Right there, that was that was keeping this high voltage section from moving back far enough. Kind of tilt it, lay it over on its side. Whew, that's one tough little monkey there. I got that nut runner on there. Had to. That was hard to get that started, but I think I'm almost there. Okay, here's the two nuts that hold on that cluster. Of note, the one that I just took out has like a little shoulder on it. This is the one on the bottom. So the one with the shoulder on it must be there must be a wider hole on the bottom that engages something to remember. Note this first easy to get at screw on the tuner cluster has one of these little pigtails, these little, little hold downs to wrap around the uh, these yellow wires. That same screw is part of the grounding strap it goes to this top screw on the CRT hold down mount so I'm going to go ahead and take that out now just remember this grounding strap goes to that top screw hole there and the very top screw hole on this corner of the CRT okay right in here where the where I'm pointing at right here is another tuner screw. This is interesting. It's got a very thin sheet metal piece that attaches to this upper plate and then the lower thicker metal goes to the UHF part. I'm not sure what that's all about, but it looks like the screw is more holding the UHF intact than anything else. This also came off from God knows where. I think it was attached to the to down here somewhere on the uh, ground of power strip. I, don't, I didn't notice it getting torn, but apparently I must have torn something. It's clearly a ground for the tuner. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Anyway, I got that other screw out. Now there's supposedly two more in there, but God knows where they are. Well, there's only this one other screw here. This is easier to show from behind. That was holding the tuner in. Uh, I've got the speaker wires. I think I'm just going to unsolder those. There's no way I'm going to try to unscrew that speaker and then I have to mess around with the phone jack. It's probably easier just to unsolder those wires so we don't end up screwing up the speaker terminals but we're going to give that a shot next. But I think we're getting pretty close now. Okay this is one of the yellow wires to the degaussing. I might just clip this. Uh, it goes to the switch down here and the other one goes to right here to the connection at the uh, Insulated. Yeah, it looks like it's just connected to the ground then. I guess it goes to the ground into this. Because that's that connection there actually just connects to the ground. Well, there you have it. Now we can get started on removing the CRT. And all the guts basically kind of came out as one big package. So I'm just kind of hopefully I didn't disrupt any wires or bust anything I was very gentle with how I handled it so it all just kind of came out as one big massive lump had to support the weight of the of the flyback I mean the, yeah the flyback high voltage area here and kind of get your hand underneath the bottom of the main PC board I didn't want to flex it I guess now would be a good time to look it over although it was working fine so I guess I shouldn't have to do anything to it let me kind of undo this mess a little bit. Get this a little freed up so it's not too stressed out. That all looks good. I gotta be careful. I don't want to flex any of these little coils down here too tightly. Mm -hmm. That all looks all right. I don't see anything that looks smoked or burned or anything, and it was working fine, so I don't really expect to. Anyway, that's that. Put it all back together in a few minutes. Try to get that CRT swapped out.